In 2020, Joe Biden became U.S. president. He's 1.83 meters, or six foot. Four years later, he was succeeded by Donald Trump, who's 1.90, or six foot three. Abraham Lincoln himself was 1.93, or six foot four. These were all tall presidents. If we look at the height of all the U.S. presidents over the years, we see two things. First, most of them were taller than the average male height at the time. And secondly, it seems that their heights have been going up over the years. Why are US presidents so tall? And why are their heights getting bigger? Do you need to be tall to become successful? I looked at the scientific research on how your height impacts your life. And I investigated how height predicts your sports performance, your health, your dating life, and your career. I'm gonna use two short characters and two tall characters to show how they're impacted by height in these four areas. But what exactly is a short or tall person? People come in many different sizes. In the US, doors are typically 2.03 meters tall. Let's see how people from different countries fit through these doors. The country with the shortest women is Guatemala, with an average female height of 1.51 meters. But that's just the average height. There are shorter women in Guatemala and around the world. For example, Simone Biles, an American who's the most decorated gymnast in history, is 1.42 meters tall. As for men, Timor Leste has the shortest average height at 1.60 meters. In the US, the average height is 1.61 for women and 1.75 for men. The tallest country in the world is the Netherlands, with an average of 1.70 for women and 1.84 for men. Roughly one in every five Gen Z Dutch men are at least 1.90 meters. NBA players are 2 meters tall on average. And Zach Eady, the tallest active NBA player, is 2.24 meters tall. If you want to check the average height of your country, you can pause the video now and check the table on the screen. I also asked my audience about their heights. It turns out they're 1.67 and 1.79 meters tall on average for women and men respectively, assuming we only include the adults. For characters, I'm going to use the nationalities of the shortest and tallest countries and I'm going to give them typical names. Willem, Willemijn, Manuel, and Maria. To highlight the difference in height, I'm going to assume Maria and Willem are a bit shorter and taller than their country's average. So, who has an advantage? Let's start with sports. As you can imagine, it helps to be tall if you want to make it to the NBA. But being short can be an advantage for other sports. As you get bigger, the physics of your body change. Some features of your body grow proportionally as you get taller. If you're 20% taller, your reach is about 20% longer, which is helpful in basketball. But other features are different. Because our bodies have complicated shapes to model mathematically, it's easier to explain it with cubes. Take these two concrete blocks. One is twice as long as the other. Blocks of concrete can withstand more force if they're bigger, and the strength of the block is directly proportional to its cross-sectional area. If the cube on the right is two times longer, then its cross-sectional area is four times larger. The area of a cube grows to the power of two relative to the length, making the second cube four times stronger. The same principle applies to our bodies. In theory, if Willem is 20% taller than Manuel, then his strength could potentially be 44% bigger, although the real number depends on other factors. As a result, in sports where raw strength matters, being tall helps. That includes sports where you throw things like javelin throw, and fighting sports. In boxing, strength and reach matter so much that athletes are divided based on weight classes. A short fighter would have a hard time beating a well-trained larger fighter. What happened? You've been out for days. We were not sure you were gonna make it. What happened? You suffered a severe lack of problem-solving skills. You're going to need Brilliant.org, the sponsor of this video. Brilliant is a platform for learning math, computer science, and data analysis. But with this app, you learn with interactive examples. So you don't learn by memorizing lectures, you learn by doing, which is a more effective way to learn. Huh. Doesn't matter if you're a total beginner or more advanced, there's content for every level. You can try Discourse to learn data analysis, or Discourse to get started with Python, or Discourse to understand how LLMs like ChatGPT work. Because the lessons are interactive, it's generally satisfying to use this app. You can also use Brilliant on your phone, so you can use it anywhere you go and replace mindless scrolling with learning. 
You can scan the QR code on screen or visit brilliant.org slash memeabledata to get a 30-day free trial, and you also get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. As a cube grows bigger in volume, so does its weight. Weight and volume increase to the power of 3 relative to the length. A cube that is 2 times longer has 8 times more volume and weight. That means that, although taller people tend to have greater strength in absolute terms, their strength relative to their body weight is lower. That's important for sports where you have to lift your body weight, like climbing. Your linear momentum, which describes the force required to slow down an object, also grows to the power of 3. But the strength of the muscles used to stop your movement only grows to the power of 2. If you're tall, it's harder to stop your motion, but also harder for other people to stop you, which is useful in sports like American football. As you get bigger, your rotational momentum increases to the power of 4, and your rotational inertia increases to the power of 5. Rotational momentum and rotational inertia are complicated words to describe how hard it is to speed up or slow down the rotation of an object. Shorter people tend to be able to change their rotation speeds faster, giving them an important advantage in sports like gymnastics, which probably explains why Simone Biles is so short. So while taller athletes have an advantage in reach and raw strength, shorter athletes tend to be quicker, more agile and strong for their size. What about our health? Is it healthy to be tall? A study looked at the heights and health of male conscripts in rural Spain and found that, for the men born between 1835 and 1869, tall men were living almost 8 years longer than short men. Why were short men dying younger? Is being short unhealthy? This is a trick question. Your height depends on two things. Your genetics and your environment. And that especially includes your nutrition and diseases during childhood. In Western societies, it's estimated that these environmental factors account for about 20% of the variation in heights, and that in lower income countries the number is probably even higher. Our heights reflect our living standards. These shorter Spanish men were not dying earlier because they were short, they were dying earlier because they had worse health and living conditions. If we look at the average male heights per country and plot them against the Human Development Index, which measures the quality of life of countries, we see that countries with a higher Human Development Index tend to have taller people. And if we plot the height against childhood mortality, we get the opposite correlation. Disease during childhood can limit growth, and countries with a higher child mortality rate tend to have shorter people. As living standards increase around the world, so did our heights. In the space of 100 years, the world average height increased about 8 cm for women and 9 cm for men. So, health tends to increase height. But how does height impact your health? Tall people tend to have harder falls. If you drop a very small cube of stone on the floor, it will most likely bounce off the ground. If you drop a very large cube of stone, it will probably break. The impact of your fall increases to the power of 4 relative to the height. That would be fine if there would be enough surface area to dissipate the impact, but your surface area only increases to the power of 2. If Willem hits the ground, he will suffer an impact with a concentration of energy two times bigger than Maria's. And that's assuming the impact is evenly distributed by the body. If the impact is concentrated on a small area, let's say the corner of a curb, then the impact could be almost four times bigger. Therefore, shorter people tend to have a lower risk of injury during falls and car accidents. The torque generated when you bend over increases to the power of four relative to your height, but the counter torque generated by your muscles only increases to the power of three. As a result, taller people tend to have more back problems. And due to the proportions of heart muscles relatively to your body weight, tall people also tend to have a lower heart rate, which is a risk reduction factor for cardiovascular diseases. And because of their body mass to surface area ratios, it's easier for tall people to stay warm in the cold, but that also puts them at the higher risk of heat stroke. There are both pros and cons for being short or tall, and if we look at the research on life expectancy, we find mixed results. However, some research indicates that taller people are more likely to get cancer, and in the end, it seems that shorter people have a slightly longer life expectancy. Now, how does height impact your dating life? This chart shows the height of US men measured by doctors in physical exams. The average US male height in 2023 was about 1.75 meters or 5 foot 9. But if we compare this line with the height self-reported by US men, something interesting happens. Firstly, the distribution is skewed to the right. On average, men exaggerated their height to be 2.4 centimeters or about 1 inch taller than their actual height. Secondly, when we get to the 5 foot 11 mark, we get a dip followed by a bump at 6 foot. 
suggesting that many men who are just below 6 foot add an inch to their height. There might be some truth behind the memes, although women also exaggerated their heights by 1.7 centimeters. It seems people do exaggerate their height, especially men. But do women really prefer taller men? The papers I found do seem to indicate that. It seems that women prefer taller partners and men prefer shorter partners, with this preference being stronger for women. However, these papers also indicate that, firstly, people prefer heights that are somewhat similar to their own heights, so Maria would probably be more likely to be interested in someone with Manuel's height rather than Willem's. And secondly, this paper suggested there were no differences in how often short men went on dates compared to tall men. So, although shorter men and taller women do seem to face some challenges in the dating world, the effect of height is, quote, modest and just one of many factors that impact attraction. And how does height impact your career? Was height important for these men to become US presidents? We've seen how height is impacted by your nutrition and health. Since your socioeconomic situation impacts these two, it impacts your height as well. People from privileged socioeconomic backgrounds are more likely to be tall and height has been used as an indicator of wealth inequality. For example, another study that looked at Spanish conscripts between the 1870s and year 1930 found that highly qualified non-manual workers were on average 3.6 centimeters taller than agricultural workers. So, when we see a positive correlation between height and career success, we have to keep in mind that it could also be explained by the privileged background of taller people, who may have had access to better education, nutrition, and healthcare in childhood. Having said this, even when researchers adjust the data for these factors, they find some advantages favoring taller people. It seems taller people are perceived as more competent, employable, and healthy, they are seen as more leader-like, and they tend to have a higher self-esteem and social esteem. On the other hand, some research suggests that being very tall or very short does not have a big impact on how other people perceive you. I left out some details of the research to keep the video light, but in short, there is some evidence of bias favoring taller people in careers. Does this mean you can't be a CEO if you're short or a rock climber if you're tall? Fortunately, you can. There are pros and cons to every height. Although it is true there are some biases favoring taller people in the workplace, height is just one of many variables that predict success. There are countless examples of high-achieving professionals who are shorter than average. And even in sports, where size arguably matters more, there are examples of shorter people overperforming in basketball and tall people overperforming in rock climbing. Thank you for watching. If you like stories told with data, consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel, and thank you to our patrons.